coming up today, a flight that was supposed to be a complete disaster. The check-in queue should have been miles long. The security check, understaffed. The flight, hours late. Wouldn't you know it though, none of that happened. The full trip report begins in 15 seconds. Hi there. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Kevin, and today I'm going to take you along for my flight from London Gatwick to Barcelona. First off though, a 5am Uber ride, which at 105 pounds, cost me more than the flight itself. Get there early, they said. So I did. If you'd like to see the full fare that I paid, as well as the next five videos coming out, please check out the description below. I mean, from the moment that I stepped out of the Uber, it was pretty clear that mayhem was not breaking out just quite yet. Taking up a good chunk of the North Terminal, EasyJet has a huge operation out of Gatwick with over 200 departing flights per day this summer. Everything was meant to be automated and the queues for check-in were just about 10 minutes long when I arrived just before 6 a.m. Note, you can't actually check in on your own more than three hours in advance. I was there three hours and five minutes prior to departure and had to have an agent sort out my kiosk. Gatwick, being the second largest of London's five airports, is a major hub for leisure travel, and my trip through security was complete in less than 15 minutes. I am someone who can unpack and repack their carry-on with my eyes closed, I think, but most travelers would probably appreciate, just after the x-ray machines, there were numerous designated areas for you to step aside and sort out your bags without feeling pressured to do so instantaneously, like you are at most TSA checkpoints in the US. After passing through a maze of duty-free shops, you'll be deposited right here, which is where you might need to wait for a while if you're early for your flight. More on that in a minute. For me, I headed to the number one lounge, which I accessed with Priority Pass. The lounge was fantastic and far above what I was expecting for a contract lounge at a leisure airport in Europe. There were plenty of seating areas, a full bar, and a decent spread for breakfast. It was crowded during my visit, but there was still always a seat to be found. I was lucky enough to park myself at the far corner of the lounge, with floor-to-ceiling windows on both sides. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Alright, now back to that forced waiting. So EasyJet, perhaps Gatwick in general, doesn't post gate information until literally minutes prior to the posted boarding time. If this was a single concourse, that would be fine. But if you want to leave the central hall, you're going to need to pick one of three very different directions. So I did a bit of digging found my aircraft registration, and then checked its previous flight and just zoomed in until I could figure out more or less which gate it was at, or at least what area it was in. So towards gate 112 I went. It's a pretty cool setup, taking you up and over the taxiway with fantastic views of the apron literally below you. A few travelators and escalators later, I found my aircraft. Waited around 20 minutes at the gate, at which point the gate was posted exactly at the same time that pre-boarding began. One thing I'm not a fan of is how EasyJet structures their fare bundles. It's not totally a la carte, so you'll possibly end up paying for a benefit that you didn't really need. In this case, early boarding, which was pretty popular. Once on board, we were presented with a bit of a dated interior, but a very well-kept one. Today's flight took off just eight minutes late and brought us up to 35,000 feet, 
for our hour and 44 minute flight south to Barcelona with an early arrival. Today's flight was on an Austrian registered Airbus A319, which is officially part of EasyJet's Europe fleet now, a new registration created post-Brexit. And while I'm not one to fall for the crappy British weather stereotypes, this certainly was the greyest of grey taxis that I think I've ever seen. We'd be taking off to the east before turning south to cross metropolitan France. The spool up, coming up next. Gotta admit, A319 spool ups, not the most exciting. But if you'd like to check out the full length takeoff video of this flight, please check out my Roam Above channel. A link is below in the description. I genuinely thank EasyJet for making their layout so straightforward. This was probably the easiest interior graphic I have ever made. Inside, we find 26 rows three of which are designated as extra legroom rows, all of which come with an extra cost, 11 pounds extra in this case for my seat 11 Foxtrot. There's not loads of extra legroom, but it's certainly better than 28 inches of pitch. Shortly after takeoff, the crew organized a payable food and drink service. The menus were nicely laid out with a decent selection for reasonable prices, but the only thing that I was really interested in trying out were one of the sandwiches on offer which were either sold out by the time they got to me or just not loaded on this flight. And so, for the meal service, I had this. An empty and dirty tray table. Thankfully, I ate in the lounge anyway. We began our approach into Barcelona from the north before our final, which kept that gray theme going. Touchdown was so smooth that it was almost silent, and we made our way to our remote parking stand, passing a pretty sleek private 737 on the way. Immigration in Barcelona was literally a matter of seconds long, and the bag soon followed. Then onto the city center to the Almanac Hotel, which will be featured in my next video. Here, we have today's flip-flop score. Overall, it was a perfectly fine low-cost flight. Fairly comfortable and on time. Not much else to ask for. I do really hope that you enjoyed this quick trip report today. If you did, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for two new videos every week.